The Mac Studio is way better than a specced up Mac Mini that costs more, right? Wrong, at least for a lot of people. Now I put this through everything. I tested out benchmarks, real world productivity tests. I even pushed its small cooling system to its limits and I have to say, I was extremely impressed. It honestly kind of blew my mind. So in this video, I will give you guys a breakdown of everything and share my honest opinions. Now right at the get-go, I have to tell you guys know that I prefer the Mac Studio's design. I love having that SD card on the front. I really wish this Mac Mini had it, and the two USB-C ports that you can get with the M1 Max or Thunderbolt if you go for the Ultra. Now, in this video, I'm focusing on the M1 Max, but I'm gonna provide benchmarks from both the 24-core $2,000 model and the 32 core M1 Max if you spend the extra money. Now on the back, the port layout is very similar. We have four Thunderbolt ports, we have two regular USBs, we have an HDMI and an Ethernet. Now the Mac Studio comes with 10 gigabit Ethernet, whereas the Mini, you have to pay an extra 100 bucks, meaning if we match up the RAM, the storage, and max out the M2 Pro, it's actually more expensive by 100 bucks than the base Mac Studio, and that kind of sucks. On the flip side, the Mac Mini has a way more powerful HDMI port that could support 8K60 and 4K 240 frames per second instead of just being capped at 4K60. Now to me, that doesn't matter that much because I use a Thunderbolt port, but that is really nice for some people and for future proofing. With that, this bad boy also has Wi-Fi 6E and it has Bluetooth 5.3, whereas the Mac Studio doesn't. Now at my house, I actually upgraded my Wi-Fi setup and using the new router and everything allowed me to go from 741 megabytes per second to 1,162, realizing the full benefit of my gigabit ethernet. So if you're paying for fast ethernet, Wi-Fi 6E could be very helpful. Now I'm doing a full detailed video about this and the downsides, and yes, there are some. So make sure you guys are subscribed and with that, you want to subscribe for our giveaway because we're giving away a 14 inch MacBook Pro and a Mac Mini. So there's going to be two winners. All I have to do is be subscribed, enable notifications, and make sure you comment down below on this video along with our previous May videos about these new Macs and Mac Mini and the upcoming ones all the way to February 1st, which is the day that we're going to announce the winners. So good luck. Now here are the full specs of the machines I am comparing so you guys can see that they are very similar. They are matched up with the SSD and the RAM. And that also means that we are not limited by the slower SSDs that Apple has put in to their new M2 Pro machines. And our Mac Mini actually has faster write speeds than the same capacity Mac Studios, but slightly slower on the read. Now getting into performance with Geekbench 5, the M2 Pros have more powerful CPUs. We saw about an 8% increase in single core performance and in terms of multi-core, roughly 20% better. Now that is because we have slightly faster clock speeds and we have two extra efficiency cores which are also more powerful even though these are not battery powered devices. Now as far as metal graphics performance, the Mac Studios with the higher GPU cores are 18 and 33% faster. Now yes, Geekbench Metal doesn't scale all the way, but the scaling is equal between them. So this 19 core is not as powerful. Now let's dive deeper into graphics performance. I tested GFX Benches, Aztec Ruins 4K, and here the Mac Studios were 16 and 52% higher frames per second, which is a big difference, and that sucks for the Mac Mini. And then I tested out 3D Mark's gaming test, Wildlife, and here it was even greater. The 24 core Mac Studio got 22% higher frames per second, and the full 32 core had 56% higher frame rates, which means if for some reason you wanna buy a Mac Mini for gaming, well, it is not working out great, but I think you'll be impressed with some other graphics performance coming up. I maxed out the CPU's rendering in Cinebench and the Mac Mini had about 20% higher core than the Mac Studios, showing off that CPU performance. Now, I definitely saw this little system get hot and Apple likes to keep it hot. So I wanted to see how much wattage is pulling and it's pulling roughly 22% more wattage to get that extra power. So we're not getting any extra really efficiency benefits to get that performance. It's just raw clocks 
speeds and cores. Now, when I looked at the temperatures and the fan speed, um, I noticed that Apple allows this thing to hit roughly 100 degrees Celsius before it even turns up the fans. And I also noticed that Apple actually allows the fan to run higher now, 5,000 RPMs, compared to 4,500. Now, I don't know if it's a new fan, but when I manually maxed it at 5,000 RPM, it was a lot louder than the previous Mac Minis. But what is very weird is that even after about 10 minutes of stress testing Cinebench, Apple is only running the fans at about 2,350 RPMs and really liking and allowing the system to run at around 100 to 101 Celsius. They were fine with that. They tried to keep it quiet and it was. The Mac Studio on the other hand, barely runs its fans. It's practically at idle and it runs much, much cooler. Of course, when you took that thing apart, half of the Mac Studio is its beefy cooling system and it does really show. Now, I wanted to see, will the Mac Mini thermal throttle with its tiny cooler if you're not only running a CPU task, but maxing out both, which some programs and some tasks do do. So I ran 3D Mark and Cinebench at the same time and the Mac Mini hit 108 degrees Celsius before Apple decided with the software to turn the fans up higher. After 10 minutes, the CPU was running at 98 degrees Celsius and the graphics was running at 82 degrees Celsius compared to the Mac Studio, where doing the same test, it was running at 71 Celsius for the CPU and 61 for the graphics. So the Mac Studio runs silently and super cool, even under insane load with that M1 Max. Now on the plus side, Apple didn't even have to reach its 5,000 RPM that they allow, it ran at about 4,300 while the temps were there. And I manually did max it out and it helped a little bit, but not much. The positive thing is knowing that even though this cooler is small in here, you're not gonna have any thermal throttling issues. Now, before I show you more surprising results, I've got to talk about the best MagSafe iPhone case I've ever seen, the Magic Sand case from our partner, CaseQ. Now, I've been using it for a while now, and not only have I enjoyed its design, it's fairly slim, but the MagSafe magnets are insanely powerful. But not only that, this whole ring actually is a stand so you can pull it out and it works great either way vertically horizontally where some stands they kind of suck and they're flimsy or they only work good one way you can also use it as a grip and it folds back flat so you can use it with any magsafe accessories or chargers check it out by using link down below and you can save 23 percent off your order today and now let's get into some more very weird and interesting results now for all of you guys that do coding we ran our xcode benchmark and the mac mini was about 35% faster. This really makes no sense to me because the processor in here is about 20% faster as far as raw performance, but Apple's made a lot of changes in these chips, including better uh, memory caching, uh, beefing a lot of different things up, and it definitely is showing. So this is the fastest Apple computer for Xcode. Now, for those of you that do music production, we also tested out Logic, and here I expected it to be really fast because you have better CPU performance, but in fact, it was worse than both the Mac Studio M1 Max models. Now, that is because this is clocked higher, and so you have a little bit worse stability. So in our track test with different plugins, it's called uh, the new Logic Benchmark, it actually did slightly worse. Now for web browsing and web-based applications, and I know there's more and more of them coming out, this thing is incredibly fast because of its single core performance and because of the memory. It is extremely smooth and it rocks any web-based task you throw at it. Now, I also thought that the M2 Pro Mac Mini would be better for Affinity. I upgraded to Affinity 2 and I ran their benchmark, and in the CPU, it was faster, but by only 13%, which didn't make sense for the vector tasks, and for graphics, which is what most of it is, the Mac Studios were 20 and 38% faster. And Affinity is very well optimized, so I expected less of a difference, or even the Mac Mini possibly winning, 
but it didn't. Now, I also tested out Lightroom Classic, which is what I use and a lot of people do. And this is where I was kind of blown away. Exporting my standard 50 raw 42 megapixel edited images, the Mac Mini actually beat out both versions of the Mac Studio. Now, Lightroom now uses both the CPU and the GPU, uses a lot of memory, and I just didn't think it would win, but it did. I also created a massive panorama using 10 50 megapixel raw images. And once again, the Mac mini won the other two and by a bigger margin this time. And I think that has got to do with the improved cache in the M2 chip and the other things that Apple improved. So if you use Lightroom, my goodness, this thing is great. I also wanna test out Photoshop where I created a very large HDR Pro image, and here, the Mac Mini beat out the 24-core Mac Studio, but not the 32-core M1 Max. Now, this uses a bunch of graphics, and of course, those have better graphics performance, but it still beat out the Mac Studio base model, which is impressive. Getting into 3D rendering, I used the latest version of Blender using Metal, and for the basic, easy BMW task, the Mac Mini lost. It was 11% slower than the 24-core and 25% slower than the 32-core, and you would say that makes sense as worse graphics performance, but take a look at this. I also tested out Party Tug, which is a lot tougher. It's a lot more uh, memory intensive with different shaders. And here, the Mac Mini actually beat out the 24-core Mac Studio despite having five less cores. Now, the 32-core did win, but this got me thinking, why are we getting such a flip? So I tested out our tough memory test for Blender that needs a lot of it, or at least very fast memory. And the M2 Mac Mini won this time around, beating both Mac Studios. So basically, what we found out is that these new M2 Pro chips really excel when you have a lot of memory that needs to move very fast. So if you do tough 3D projects or large ones, it will actually beat out an M1 Max Mac Studio. Now let's get into video editing, and this is where things start to change because the M1 Max chip, and of course the M2 Max, they have dual encoders, so they are designed to be really good at this. Now, what really surprised me is when I stabilized a one minute 4K clip, the Mac Mini actually won. It's so fast at processing a lot of memory intensive tasks. Of course, I use a lot of graphics as well, but when we switch to encoding regular H.264 4K, it definitely lost with its single encoders. The same thing goes for HEVC. Now I have these graded with film grain applied. It is also quite a bit slower. Now, since those previous exports were limited by the encoders, I wanted to throw something a little bit tougher for them to do. The first thing I did is I exported 8K red footage. And this is really maxed out by the GPU, so all of them are maxed out, that's the limitation. And the 32 core M1 Max definitely beat everything else out, but I was surprised how close the M2 Pro was to the 24 core M1 Max. And the same thing goes if you're exporting to ProRes uh, because the graphics is the limitation itself. Now I also exported some 4K ProRes RAW to ProRes and here all of them lined up very similarly. Uh, and I'm guessing that's just because there's so many different things going on with the decoding of the RAW, graphics, but if you're looking at just ProRes encoding performance, uh, the M1 Maxes, they definitely are ahead because of their dual encoders compared to the single one. So overall, I would say if you are a video editor, I would go for the Mac Studio. You also get those extra ports and the SD card reader. But if you work in Photoshop a lot and Lightroom, surprisingly, the Mac Mini does better. The same thing for coding, tougher Blender projects, and some of the other things I talked about, like web-based apps, uh, it really kind of surprised me. So if you were thinking the Mac Mini is a terrible buy when you get close to the price of Mac Studio, well, I think you are wrong <laughs> because it is a very good machine. Now, we don't think that Apple's gonna update the Mac Studio to the M2 Max and Ultra chips for a while. They might wait another year. So if you're trying to buy one, not only do you get the better HDMI, the better Wi-Fi, but overall, it is a very solid 
machine. Now we're also gonna be testing out this full spec one that's unbinned to the cheaper, more affordable $1,300 model and the M2 version as well. So if you're trying to decide which one to buy, make sure you guys click that circle above. And if you wanna pick one up, use the YouTube shopping feature down below. We'll have all these linked. Check out one of those great videos right over there. This has been Max and I'll see you in the next one.